Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, let's put our hands together, everybody. Let's praise the Lord. Let's rejoice. Let's rejoice. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice.
morning, church. Good morning. I'll be reading 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. And it says, To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, right. not in putting their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the world of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Amen. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God himself. I have read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. May the Lord have blessing hearing, reading, doing of his holy word. Amen. Praise the Lord God has had in my life. Take yourself out of this. But I don't know, my Father, we thank you right now for waking us up and touching with your finger of love, my Father. Go to the use of our extremities, we're closing our right mind. We're able to come into this house over faith right now, my Father. Right now, we give you honor, praise, and glory because you are worthy to be praised. Right now, my Father, we come into you as humble as we can, my Father, with bow down head and humble hearts. Asking you and requesting you, my Father, as this day go forward, my Father, give everyone attentive ear of the one that's going to bring the word right now, my Father. And touch him from the crown of the head to the soul feet, my father. So what's going on in this world right now, my father? Wars and rooms of wars, violence, hurricanes, tornadoes. But you knew all the food again in the world right now, my father. Nothing kept you on guard right now, my father. We thank you right now, my father. Right now, my father, it's first a prayer for the bereaved family right now, my father. There's so many, but I won't call them all out, but just there was a few, my father. Touch the Greenwells and the Bryan family right now, my father. Touch me with a finger of love, my father. Let know we may come at night, but joy will come in the morning. Might not come right now, but it will come. If they lean and depend on you right now, my father. So touch them as they go to this journey, my brother. Also touch that family that wedding that was done too, my father. Bind them in Christian love, my father. As long as they lean and depend on you, everything will be all right. Touch the ownership of this church, my father. And his helpmate, my father. Where they may be at, my father. Bring them and give them traveling grace back, my father. And touch this host of men, my father, stand in his stead, my father, to rightly divide the word, my father. Touch from the poor pit to the earthen road, my father. Right now, my father, touch these young children right now, my father. It's been a while we've we heard from them, my father, but they won't be giving you praise and glory, my father. And touch the one that leading them to, my father. Anoint her up on high, my father, and the other teachers, my father. Touch the urchins too, my father. They're standing at the door, my father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my father. And again, my father, touch my family too, my father. That we give you honor and glory, my father. And forgive us our sins, my father, for we fall short on the daily basis, my father. Only you that we that you rule and guide us during this day, my father. Only you we can trust, my father. Man is fickle. They don't have the right answer, but you have the right answer, my father. Not the politicians. Not the politicians, it's but you. Because you send your only gotten son down for your generation, my father. We say thank you, thank you, thank you. We give you honor and praise in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
church say amen. The young people said, this is the way we praise him. We clap our hands. If you don't mind putting your hands together, this is the day that the Lord is made. We shall rejoice in you and be glad. Before the choir comes, we're going to give way for our welcome and our announcements. Can we say amen? Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise you the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And I've come to you to uh, welcome any guests we may have in the house and welcome my family. Uh, it's good to see you all, bright, shiny faces. And just sit back and enjoy the service. And may God richly bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm here to do your announcements. The services for Deacon Dwight Greenwell will be on November the 1st here, which will be the viewing on November the 1st here at New Hope from 4 to 8 p.m. And the service will be November the 2nd at 11 a.m. here at New Hope. This Tuesday at 11 a.m., the services for um, Sister Lipscomb will be here at 11 a.m. here at New Hope as well. Monterey Bay Baptist Church Association area-wide revival. It will be Wednesday through Friday, this Wednesday coming up. Um, the word will be preached by R.A. Williams, and it will be at 7 p.m. sharp here at New Hope. Please, everyone, come out and support. It is a revival. It is revival time. We need to be revived. So everyone, come out. It will be Wednesday through Friday, 7 p.m. sharp, here at New Hope. Women's Chorus Rehearsal will be this Thursday, October the 27th, at 5.30 p.m. Yes, it is the same day as the revival but it's at 5.30, so all those in the women's chorus, please come out um, for that rehearsal because we will be singing on Fifth Sunday. New Hope Baptist Church will be having its Christmas program Friday, December the 9th. This year's Christmas program will have a gift exchange, sponsor a child, and a potluck fellowship. The gift exchange gift amount is $20. Any member who is interested in participating will put their names and a few things they'd like on a piece of paper. Um, everyone will draw a name on November the 13th. And then the gifts will be brought December the 9th um, during the Christmas program. Um, sponsor a child, the gift amount is $20. The names, um, sex, age of our New Hope children will be provided. Members who would like to participate can pull a child's name and bring the gift also on the day of the program, which is December the 9th. Um, there will be a potluck, as I said. Um, following the Christmas program, if everyone would bring a dish approximately enough for 20 people, please use disposable containers. Okay. Oh, if you have any questions or anything, you can see Reverend Boone here. And Reverend Boone will have a few, um, a five minute meeting today after church service. And I'm assuming it will be back in the social hall. A vote, campaign for Christmas, who is the reason for the season? Vote for who you think is the reason for the season. Last voting day will be December the 4th. The candidates are Jesus Christ, Santa Claus, Xmas, 
St. Nick or Chris Kringle. Again, the last voting day will be December the 4th, um, and they can vote right there in the back of the social hall. It doesn't say where they can vote at. Oh, okay. There's a correction for the Lipscomb service. It will be at 1 o'clock on Tuesday. So the Lipscomb service will be Tuesday at 1 p.m. here at New Hope. Attention all members. It's time to update addresses and phone numbers. If you have had a change of addresses since 2020, please fill out an index card provided by ushers before leaving church today. Thank you in advance for your cooperation. And Deacon Holland has an announcement. Thank you. Yeah. Giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, to Pastor Carter and the First Lady in the Absom, to the pulpit. And to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, this pertains to everyone that has stowage in the deaconess room, which is behind me, and to the deacon room, which is to my left. If you have any items in there, it must be removed by Wednesday. We are going to renovate both rooms, so everything must go. All the paint on the walls, the paper on the walls, and even the air. We got to move it out. <laughs> so make sure, if you have anything that you want, make sure that you uh, take it home by Wednesday. Other than that, it's going to the dump. Thank you.
time for our offering. Amen. As the ushers make their way down, let me tell you how you can give today. NHBC is now accepting online mobile tithes and offering. NHBC-Seaside.com is the first way you can give this morning. P.O. Box 834 Seaside, California. 93955 is the other. www.givelify.com is the other way besides giving here today in service. Amen. Will you please bow your head as we have a moment of prayer? Master, Father God, in Jesus' name. Father, we, your people, come before you right now. Father God, just thanking you, Father, for all that you do for us. So many times, Lord God, we fall short in not only the way we walk, but in the way we give, Father God. But Lord, I'm just praying today, Father God, that you would touch the people of God's hearts today. Father God, that they will give with a cheerful heart, Father God. Give their tithes, give their offering, Father God. Bless those, Lord God, that don't have to give. But Father, let them have the mindset to want to give, Father God. All these <laughs> blessings we ask for in Jesus' name, amen. You are now in the hands of the ushers. stand for the doxology.
again, eternal Father God, we just want to say thank you. Father God, thank you because we those that had to give are giving. Thank you, Lord, for those that did not have to give. Father, we pray a blessing upon each and every individual that gave today. Father God, pour them out a blessing, Lord God, and Lord, let it see it run over, Father God. We pray, Father God, that this uh, service will be rendered onto your service for all the things that we uh, have and want to get done for your kingdom, dear God. All these blessings we ask for in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Church, say amen. 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 It's time for prayer. I don't know about you, but I stand in need of prayer. Our prayer list today, we've lost so many that have gone to be with the Lord. This morning we're praying for Pastor Slade, who the Lord called home. We're praying, praying for the Slade family. Praying for the Greenwell family, the Jordan family, the Lust family, the Delaney family, the Pete family. Praying for our mothers and fathers on today. We're praying for our nation, for our government. Praying for you, my brothers and my sisters. Praying for Sister Diane Kane and family. We're also praying for Pastor Carter and Lady Carter as they take rest. We're praying for Martha Hunter, Toby, and Lola Smith. Praying for our mothers. Looked out on the audience and praying for Mother Bean on today, Mother Davison, Mother Davis. Praying for Mother Jackson and Mother A.D. Martin, and there's others. I don't know about you. I don't know what it is that you need from the Lord. I don't know if you're sick in your body. I don't know, but I know who knows. For he knows. Even when we don't bring it before him, he knows. So at this time, I'm going to lead us in prayer this morning and ask the Lord to do what he does best. Just breathe on us. So here we are, Lord, today in your sanctuary we made our way into your house we made our way to your house father I don't know who's going through what I don't know who's burdened down I don't know who came into your house today father with weights cares concerns heartbroken just heavy with the cares of the family. Fathers in the hospital, mothers in the hospitals. Sisters, you know, Lord. Brothers, you know, Father. My family, my brothers and sisters, family, my aunts, my uncles, my brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles. Those who are seasoned in age, Father, might feel the, the weight of being alone. There's no one they feel as though no one might not even care. Father, so we made our way this morning to your house. You woke us up this morning clothed in our right mind. After waking us up, we realized we had the activities of our limbs. Father, when we woke up, we didn't and weren't confused from the kitchen and the bedroom. We realized, Father, we were able 
to talk and to breathe. Father, we don't want to take anything for granted. We have cares and concerns, but your word reminds us that you would never leave us, nor will you forsake us. Father, the children even sang this morning unto you. Father, you kept them through this week in school. You've allowed them to come to your house. And they reminded us, this is how we praise you, by the clapping of our hands. Your word declares that we bless you with our mouth. So we open our mouth and say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for giving us strength in our bodies, Father, to go on to see what the end is going to be. God, we pray even as we think right now. We pray for Deaconess Boone. Father, we ask that you complete the healer in her body. You know what each and every one under the sound of my voice is going through. I don't know. I'm inadequate. But God, you are the one. One word from you, Father. Just breathe on us today. Oh God, someone may feel like they're weak today. Someone feels like if I could just make it to your house, everything will be all right. There's someone laying in the hospital. There's someone behind prison walls. There's even someone on the battlefield. God, that's calling on you right now. God, build a shield of protection around us. Oh, God, and we'll be careful to give you praise, to give you glory, and to give you honor. Father, you know every name on the prayer list. It seems like it grows. It grows. You know those who have lost loved ones, Father. Comfort them. Look upon the Greenwell family. Look upon the Jordan family. Look upon the Lust family. Look upon the Bryant family. Father, it could have been us who've lost a loved one. But God, because of your mercy and your grace, we're thankful that you hadn't called us. But Father, even if you call us, we want to be ready. For Father, we don't sorrow as those who have no hope. Father, we thank you for the lives of those whom you called, Father. God, we want to be careful and give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor, Father. Dare we not end this prayer, not praying for your manservant, the angel of this house, the one who you have allowed to stand here and declare your word rightly, dividing your word, Father. Touch him now. Strengthen him now, Father. Anoint him afresh, Father. Oh, God, give him a new zeal and a new desire to stand flat-footed and declare your word. Look upon his companion, Lady Carter. Touch her as she ministers to him, Father. Oh, God, what she pours out into him, we ask that you pour back into her, Father. Strengthen them, Father. Look on them as they travel up and down the dangerous highways, Father. And, Father, we'll be careful to praise you, to thank you. We honor you. We reverence you. We clap these hands that you've given us. And with the voice you've given us, we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And it is so by saying, amen. Thank 
when I think <laughs> of the goodness of Jesus, he has been so good to me. He has been so good to me. Throughout all my trials and tribulations and the things that I go through each and every day, I can't help but to come back and say, thank you, Lord, for what you have done for me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, once again, Father, you have brought me here to where you would have me to be, Father. And Father, you gave me an assignment today to pass a word upon your people, Father. And Father, I'm here in full spirit, Father, to do your will. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the waking this morning. Father, I thank you for the portion of health and strength. I thank you, Father, for a roof over my head and food on my table. Oh, Father, I thank you most of all for Jesus, Father. Father, I love and I need you right now. And I ask that you hide me behind the throne, Father, so that your people can receive a word from you, Father. Oh, Father, we love and we need you, and we can't do without you, Father. Father, we ask that you bless as only you can. Keep as only you can, Father. Touch as only you can, Father. There are those that may not be able to be here today, Father. Let your word, let your word be carried out, Father, to those on the highways and the byways, Father, connecting to them, understanding, Father, that your word is very important to our life. Hmm. Bless our pastor, first lady. Bless my brother, Deacon Thompson. Our ministers here, Father, from the pulpit all the way to the last pew. Bless each and every one that's in the sound of my voice, Father. Keep as only you can. And Father, we'll be so careful to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory, Father. Because, Father, we understand that it's not about us but it is about you. And Father, we give you honor, praise, and glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I'm here today with a word from the Lord. Our scripture will be coming from 2 Corinthians Five. And I'm going to focus on one verse, and that's verse 21. Verse 21. Verse 21 says, for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. And seeing that, um, we're going to go right directly into the scripture. Um, thanking each and every one of you. You may be seated. I, I, oh, yeah, you better. Oh, I didn't know y'all were still standing. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I am concentrating on what I have to preach today. Amen. You know, I prepared this lesson. Um, and I want to regress just a little bit. Because I want to give thanks to God. Right. I want to give thanks to God. Right. 
I want to give thanks to God. Amen. Understand me that he is the reason yes, for the season. Yes, yeah, he's the reason for every day. Right. He's the reason for waking me up this morning. All right. All right. Uh, he is who I live for. All right. I want to give respect to my pastor mm -hmm. in his travels at this time. To all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I come to you today with a word from the Lord. And before I get into the word of the Lord, I want to explain to you the process of what I went through for this word. And it's not going to be a long process because I ain't going to be long. If you don't want me to be long, say amen. Amen. If you want me to be long, say hallelujah. <laughs> All right. I want to take this time, like I said, to regress a little bit and give thanks to my friend, to my partner, to the one that I think highly of. That's my wife. Amen. Amen. I, God has blessed me. He has blessed me with a wonderful wife. And I thank God for it. You know, the theme of our lesson today is, uh, they don't have it on the screen there. <laughs> the theme of our lesson today is the wonderful, gracious, only substitution. The only substitution. See, we, we have a tendency to substitute things. We put things in place of other things. We want to substitute TV for the Bible. Hmm. We want to substitute our, the Lord's teaching for whatever reason, I don't know, for things that don't even matter. You know, when we want a new car, it doesn't matter if the new car is a Hyundai, but we want a Cadillac. It doesn't matter if it's lobster. I'm saying, I'm talking about me now. I want chicken. And I use these substitution examples concerning the fact that, you know, in the beginning, I asked, what am I substituting for God? You, did you know the price of sin is death? The price of sin is death. You know, in the, in the beginning, Adam and Eve sinned. Mm -hmm. And when they sinned, they broke the bond with God. They broke the bond with God. The doctor, I mean, concerning re <coughs> consideration of God and mankind especially is accomplished through the life, the suffering, and the death of Jesus Christ. Right. Substitution is one of the major themes in the Bible. God instituted, instituted help me, Lord, the principle of substitution in the Garden of Eden. 
when Adam and Eve sinned by killing an animal to cover their nakedness, God began to paint a picture of what it would take to bring humanity back to the relationship to him. He sinned. They sinned. And God had to have a substitution to bring us back to him. By giving them the law, God showed them that his holiness and demonstrated their inability to achieve that holiness. In Romans 5.19, for by as for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. See, substitution goes back to the beginning where Adam and Eve and God then granted them a substitution to pay the price for our sins in the form of a blood sacrifice. By sacrificing an innocent animal according to God's specification. The animal died in the sinner's place. The animal died for us. Leviticus 16 tells us about a, an escape goat mm. <laughs> upon which the elders of Israel would place their hand on the goat and move our transgressions from, the, from us to the goat. Hmm. And the goat, they were sent out into the wilderness. The theme of this substitution was found throughout the Old Testament. You know, for the preclude coming of Jesus Christ. The Passover fest, which occurred in Exodus 12, gives instructions for his people to prepare the coming, prepare for the coming of the destroyer who would strike down the born male of every family. for the judgment of Egypt. So God, to protect the males of the, from the being struck down, he appointed a substitution. By placing the blood on the door, above the door, around the doorpost, the destroyer, destroyer would pass them by. God provided a substitution. God carries this theme of substitution into the New Testament for the coming of Jesus. He has set the stage so that mankind would understand exactly what Jesus came from. Jesus was brought here as a substitution. Second mm, mm, mm. Corinthians 5, 21 says that he made him who had no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become righteous of God. Now, now keep in mind, when I first started, I told you that sin is death. And that death was separate, which separated us from God. We had no connection or able to connect to him. Yes, of course, they were sacrificing lambs, burnt offerings. They were turning around and they were doing all these things, but it wasn't enough. God said that wasn't enough. That wasn't enough to provide us for 
Oh, that's me. I've been talking too long. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was uh, God needed a perfect, a perfect lamb. He didn't need just any kind of lamb. He needed a perfect lamb. And what did, to say that the only perfect lamb that he knew at that particular time was his son. Said, he said that he made him who knew no sin. He was sinless. He knew no sin. So he, he was the perfect Substitution for our sinness. Here again, we see that Christ took the sins we committed unto himself to pay the price. The only acceptance sacrifice for sin was a perfect offering. If we died for our own sins, it would not be enough. We are not perfect. Only Jesus, the perfect God-man, fits the requirements. He laid down his life for ours willingly. And a few verses later, we read, For Christ died for sins once and for all. Righteous and unrighteous were all blessed to bring to be brung to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. There was nothing we could do for ourselves. Remember, we separated from God. So God did something for us. Oh, I'm talking about an awesome God. I'm talking about a God who shows his love each and every day. But he didn't have to do it. He did not have to do it. He loved us. He loved us enough to give his only begotten son as, a burnt, as an offering for our separation from him. So he needed us to come back to him. He wanted us to come back to him. He wanted us to continue to be righteous in him. Without this offering of this substitution, there was no way. There was no way. So our awesome God turned around and brought us back to him, giving us the opportunity to be in him and be righteous in him. The atonement. He was the atonement. Meaning he was a sacrifice in the payment of our sinfulness. Yes, sir. Isaiah 53, 5 makes the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ abundantly clear. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And he was punished that both us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed so help me out here if Jesus Christ didn't die on the cross how would we get back to God how would we get back to God Living in a sin-sick world, we would be just sinners just like everybody else. Can, to come into the holy temple of God, church, each and every day, and being able to praise him. Imagine a world that had no connection with God. So, you know, I go back and say, what do we substitute for God? We turn around and we look at all these different things, but there is no substance. Jesus, for us, was the perfect. Unlike the animal sacrifice of the Old Testament, 
for it is impossible for the blood of a bull and a goat to take away the sins. Someone might say, someone out there might say, well, you mean uh, all them sacrifices that them Jews did back in those days, they were for nothing? The, the writer clearly clarifies that the animals of the blood, the animal's blood itself had no value. Right. It was the blood that symbolized that made the difference. Yes. Sacrificing the animal, it symbolized the value of the ancient sacrifice was that the animal was a substitute for the human being's sin. And that it pointed forward to the ultimate sacrifice, which was Jesus. Some people made the mistake of thinking that since Jesus died for the sins of the world, everyone would go to heaven one day. Well, I'm here to tell you that ain't true. I'm here to tell you that ain't true. I'm here to tell. That is not correct. The substitution of death for Jesus Christ must be personally applied to each heart. Yes, sir. Thank you. Must be personally applied to each heart. If you think your works can get you in heaven, you're wrong. If you think you're going to worship the devil and get in heaven, on, you're wrong. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, if you think that you do nothing and just stand there and you're going to automatically by osmosis get into heaven, yeah. you're wrong. Yes, you better say that. Come on. Glory to God. The blood of the Passover is person, was personally applied to the door at the time of the Passover. Yes, they had to personally apply that to the door in order for the destroyer to pass by. Right, right. So what we have to do, we have to personally right. accept Jesus Christ right. as our Lord and Savior right. through faith in order to get to heaven. Amen. Before we can become the righteous of God, we must challenge ourselves to change our sin nature for the holy for the body of the holy one God offers a substitution but we must receive the substitution personally by accepting Jesus Christ by faith Jesus Christ died in our place when he was crucified on the cross we deserved to be the ones that was placed on the cross. And I'm here to tell you today that when he died on the cross, we were deserving to be that substitution right there. But he died for us. He, ca he carried the sins. He carries our sin. For not the sins of the past. Well, I'm going to say not the sins of the past, but the sins of the past, yeah. the sins of the present, and the sins of the future. Yes, sir. He died for us. Amen. Now, that's love. Amen. That's love. That's the love of God. Amen. That's the love of God for his people. And, and if we don't recognize the fact that Jesus Christ took the punishment for our sins, mm. then we don't recognize the substitution. Right. He substituted himself for us and took what we rightly deserve. Yeah. We can only pay the price of sin on our own. And you know, if we tried to pay the price of sin on our own, what would happen? Hmm. We would end up in an eternal hell. Yes, hmm. But God the Son, Jesus Christ, came to earth to pay the price yes. for our sins. Yes. Because he did this for us, 
we now have the opportunity not only to have our sins forgiven, but to spend eternity with God. In order to do this, we must place our faith in what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. We can't save ourselves. We need a substitution to take our place. The death of Jesus Christ is a substitutionary atonement. Keep in mind, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we may become righteous with God. And I just, I just want to tell you, and I want to end because I'm going to the throne right now, and I need you to go there with me. They hung him high. They hung him high on the cross. They put nails in his hand. They put nails in his feet. They crucified him on that cross that day. They laid him in an unborrow in a borrowed tomb. Oh, he stayed there in that tomb all day Friday, all day Saturday. But early, early, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. And I thank you, Lord for this opportunity to be able to praise you and give your word to your people, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you for saving a wretch like me. Father, I don't know where I would be today if it wasn't for you. And each time each time, Lord, that I think that I'm going to stumble, <laughs> you pick me up. You pick me up, Lord. I had a, heard a preacher say the other day, that God closes a door that no one else can open. And he opens the door that nobody can close. And God has opened so many doors for me. And I know that he ain't through with me yet. Will you come to God? Will you come to God? Once again, I ask the question. What substitute do you have for God? I thank you for taking this moment to listen to me. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 We're all standing. Can we all stand at this time? We're going to open the doors to the church. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the man of God who declared the word. If you were listening to that message, there was some profound things said in that word to challenge you. To challenge you. And to cause you to ask, what have you put in the place of God? What have you used as a substitute? Truth be told, there is no substitute. The Bible says he came, he bled, he died, and he rose again. That's the gospel message that he preached about. 
So as we opened the doors to the church, I was sitting there and I was thinking, there might be someone here today. Reverend Trope was supposed to do it. I asked him to do it, but I asked him, could I do it? the invitation? Many have left. Many have been called home, saved and not saved. But while the blood is running warm in your veins today, while you took that breath you just took that the Lord gave to you, if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, I challenge you to come today. I challenge you to come. I don't know if you know him. You know that. And we preach this every Sunday. We say this every Sunday. It is as simple as the ABCs. A, you have to admit that you are a sinner. B, believe that Jesus Christ is the remedy for sin. And C, confess him as Lord and Savior. Now remember, you're standing before a holy and a righteous God. And he knows. So while you have this opportunity right now, would you come if you don't know him? He says, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. In other words, don't turn a deaf ear to his word. His word came. His word came and it said that he wants you to be his righteousness. Him that knew no sin became sin. Would you come today? Maybe you've broken fellowship. Maybe you broke fellowship. Maybe you stand in need of prayer. Would you come today? Ten minutes from now is not promise. Would you come today? Maybe you're not in the place that you want to be. Would you come today? Would you come, ma'am? Would you come, sir? Might be on that usher board. Might be in the choir stand. Might be in the pulpit. Might be playing a mus musical instrument. Would you come and say, it's me standing in the need of prayer? Would you come? You don't have to leave the same way you came here. The Lord, he knows what you're struggling with. He knows what you put in his place. You know, one of his names is Jealous. When you put something before him, he's jealous. Would you come? Can we make room up here? Someone else needs to come. Someone else needs to come. We need to make room up here. Someone else needs, someone else needs to come. Someone want to get home to watch the football game, but you won't get there unless the Lord allow you to get to that game. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're going to have Reverend Trope come and just lead us in prayer at this time. All have come for prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now, Father God. Father, you know the needs of the people that have come up here to represent what they need from you, God. Father, we're asking you to touch them only as you can. Father God, we're asking you to minister only as you can, Lord. We're asking you to have your way upon their life only as you can, oh God. Yes. Father, we're asking you to touch them 
In the name of Jesus, oh God, we're asking you, Lord God, to breathe upon him, Father God. Lord God, take out those things that is bothering him, Father God. Lord, whatever it is, Lord God, whatever problem, whatever situation that they're being faced with and they have come into where they need to be up here right now, Lord God, we're asking you to touch, Lord. Minister, Father God. Help them to see, Lord God, that you are the truth, the life, and the way. Father God, help them to understand, Lord God, that you will be that lamp onto their feet and that light onto their path, Father God, so that they won't sin against you, O oh God. Lord, help them today, Father God, so that they, Lord God, will live the life of a child of God that is pleasing in your sight, Father God. Thank you for the man of God that presented your word, Father God. Touch him, bless him, and continue to use him, Father God. Replenish him, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for him, Father God. We pray that you touch our pastor, Lord God, our leader, Father God. We pray, God, that you will continue to, to minister to his life, Lord God. Bless his helpmate. Bless his family. Then we ask that you would bless each and every one that is here today, Father God. Lord, you, despite those who didn't come up, Father God, you touch them anyway, Father God. Lord, because sometimes, Lord God, we don't move when we should move, Father God. Sometimes, Father God, we don't do what we should do, but God, we're asking you right now, to touch them in their seats, oh God, and have your way upon them, Father God. Touch them now, Father God. Minister to them now, Father God. Thank you for everyone that's here today. Father God, thank you, Lord God. Let your presence, Lord God, have its way upon your people today. And Father God, we'll be forever grateful, forever mindful, Lord God, to lift up and to glorify your name for all that you do. And Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a hand clap, say thank you. And God, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, say amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I just want to reiterate on these announcements for this week coming. I want to keep our pastor, Pastor Carter and Lady Carter, in prayer as they're traveling up and down the highways. Also, we want to remember the Lipscomb service that's on Tuesday the 25th at 1 o'clock. And also, the revival this week, Wednesday through Thursday, 7 p.m., Nightly, Dr. R.A. Williams. It's Wednesday through Friday. Oh, okay. <laughs> Some of y'all liked it if it was from Wednesday to Thursday, but Wednesday to Friday, 7 o'clock, nightly. I forgot what else I was going to say. Now, well, let's all stand. I want to pray. Amen. Eternal God, our Father, once again, Father, we want to say thank you. thank you. Thank you for this, the Lord's Day. Thank you, Father, for this service. Thank you, Father, for your word that went forth, Father. We pray once again that you would have blessed the preacher who spoke, pour back in to him, Father. Look upon his home, Father. Once again, the angel of this house is absent, Father. Look upon him as they travel, making their way back home, Father. We pray, God, that you would just have your way. Look on those who desired to come but had not come, Father. Father, we thank you for this is the day that you have made, Father. And we will rejoice in and be glad. This time as we dismiss and we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. <laughs> now to him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. We all sing together. Amen. Go in peace.